for your influencers, if you were to make like a TED conference, you know what I mean? From your past, mm -hmm. who you draw from. Did you guys watch show. Kids in the Hall? Yeah. Yeah. That was one of my favorites. I would tape that on the VCR. They would have uh, Father's Day with the kids. They would j just show like these weekend specials where they'd show all the episodes and I would tape them and, and watch them over and over again. I think they rerun on Comedy Central is where I, wa I would like sit yeah. and, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. and just mm -hmm. watch episode after episode. Yeah. Did you guys ever watch SCTV? Yeah, but not li like live. Only <laughs> to like know it. Like I didn't yeah. truly watch it. Like only later I was like, what is this? I've heard about this, but like <laughs> honestly, nah. I do, I love Catherine O'Hara though. Ugh. I mean, God. come on. I, yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I like, feel yes. cliche to say SNL. Yeah. <laughs> Fred here. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was really into SNL growing up. That was, I was a huge. Into SNL growing I was up. huge. Yeah. I loved it. I felt huge. like we all avoided just saying that because we it's did. so obvious. I, we were like I trying to, to find it. the most obscure. You guys were yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, there was a little cable access show out of Ohio. We were trying to name like something. <laughs> it's we that's really, smart. We really just we wanted to say it. felt like someone had SNL. to do it. Yeah, SNL. SNL. We, all, we all yeah. watched SNL. I was wondering if there was a particularly challenging moment from last season. Well, yeah. do you find, I mean, we have, I think the most difficult thing sometimes now for us <clears throat> is shooting in certain outdoor areas in New York. Like just logistically difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have that in, yeah. I'm town? sure everyone now knows exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's definitely certain streets in Portland where it feels like you're making sort of a collective film with the entire city, which can sometimes kind of take you out of the moment in terms of performance. It can also add to it and, and make it really exciting and lively. I find some, there's stunts that I sometimes have to do that our director, Jonathan Kreisel, because he knows we're game and he, he knows I like being a physical performer, will kind of put me in peril sometimes, whether it's like driving a car into <laughs> garbage cans or standing on the side of the highway, mm -hmm. um, jumping, falling off couches. And th I do get scared of those moments because I have legitimately hurt myself a couple times. You hurt your <laughs> your ankle. Oh, I don't remember. Or your, I your leg. You like, yeah, smacked that was bad. <laughs> it, I felt like um, in A League of Their Own when she has that crazy bruise up her leg. From sliding That's what I like, yeah, home. I felt like I was going to, but it was nothing like that. You know, actually the um, subway was pretty disgusting. Pretty like appropriately gross. How did you shoot on the subway? We just shoot in the shuttle at Times Square. And oh, it just okay. goes back and forth. Overnight. Mm -hmm. So we started like. So you like, have to like rent it out or eight, something. Yeah. Like, like, people six. are just like, ugh. Oh, it's like not functioning yeah. and they're like waiting for it. Mm -hmm. Is that your impression of someone coming up and... <laughs> that, was that, good. Was, that was my impression. That's an oh, impression. come on. <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> How did you guys uh, start working together? How did your partnership start? Fred and I both have a background in music. We were sort of circling each other's lives um, in like the indie rock world. Fred was a drummer in Chicago and... And I knew the drummer for Slater Kinney and I was a huge Slater Kinney fan. And then Fred started working so cool. on... <laughs> so cool. I can't even believe these words. Okay. Fred started working on SNL, and uh, Slater Kinney were playing in New York. But it was a Saturday, so neither of us could really see each other's show. Oh, we went sad. To, it was sad, because I, I had never seen mm -hmm. SNL before, uh, live. So we went to the after party, and we met up, and um, Fred was wearing a little button with my face on it. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, that is so sweet. I can't believe that, a pin of your face. It, oh. did, it did feel quite faded and we started working together right away, just filming little videos, very absurd. Like we would get together the night before, come up with a concept. Like the feminist bookstore characters were one of the first things we came up with. And uh, yeah, it just, it was very, a very natural extension of our friendship, which I think feels kind of rare sometimes that we didn't sort of just meet. Um, I don't yeah. know, like two people didn't kind of place us together. Um, what about you guys? We did improv. Yeah. And we were, it was like a circling that we like hadn't met each other yet. Um, and then it happened to in this improv group, Secret Promise Circle was what we called it. Well, who's the Secret Promise Circle? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's our improv name. group name. Indie Isn't team. it? It's like yeah. a little like. It took us so long. Christian to scientist come up with that name. Or Is it Was this in New York? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were both taking classes at the UCB mm -hmm. and formed you know, you kind of end up on these indie teams, and we ended up on the same practice group, and we practiced um, like once a week. Bobby Moynihan was our coach at a yeah. point. Oh, really? For a yeah, long we time. like knew him when he like got cast and was like, I gotta call in the middle of the night. Well, he auditioned wow. once, and he was like, I didn't get it. 
Yeah. And then we, he was our coach long enough and he got on. But we didn't, like, we I, hadn't. I can't coach you anymore. We were like both at the same, like at UCB, it's like sort of like classes, like freshman type of thing where like a bunch of people start in like the fall of 2006, for example. And we were part of that same like wave, but um, didn't meet each other there and couldn't get on like house teams, but you need to keep like working the muscle. So we met on this, um, this practice team. And then we just did improv for two years together while doing other things, and then both sort of decided we need to be making our own material that like wasn't individually just improv. Arrived mm -hmm. at being like wanting to script stuff and film it, and um, after like working together for two years pretty regularly. That's about for us too. It was a couple years before we yeah, really felt like there was out. a sensibility. <laughs> Wait, what was the name? I feel like I've seen. Thunder Ant. Yes, I've seen Thunder Ant. Yeah. A couple That's years cool. ago, I watched a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I used to They're go to They're really Portland cool. They're more those. absurd. Wow. They're very yeah. absurd. Yeah. Very silly. Yeah. It's funny, like something like that, it's like, um, you're like, Am I, is this like, you know, you don't know it's like def definitely going to lead to something, but it's. Right, you have no idea, but it's just it's like, so cool. well, I like doing it, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it takes like stop? a certain level of agency to be like, yeah, I'm just going to like. Yeah. Follow the fear, you know? I, the fun. I do feel like when I watch yeah. your show, it seems like they let you guys do what you, your vision. I don't watch a ton of shows where I'm like, this is, this is so clearly your point of view. It's like so you, and, rather yeah. than like somebody's like stepping in and watering it down. But I could say the same for your show too. Right. That seems very much like you. I agree. Absolutely. That's what's so special about your show to me. But you do feel that way. You're like, you have yeah. this creative control where it's yeah. your baby yeah. and it feels mm -hmm. like that. I would be surprised if it weren't. You know. So how much of your show is scripted versus improvised? We're I, entirely improvised. Okay. No. no, you're not. <laughs> no, it's a scripted no, show. It's, it's super entirely scripted, scripted. Yeah. yeah. But we'll do like three scripted takes, which like the third is finally like a real sentence, a real person saying mm -hmm. like a real sentence, you mm -hmm. know? And then Amy, we got from Amy from Parks and Rec Fun Runs, and we'll take like maybe like three to five scripted takes, and then we'll say, especially with other people. But like even with ourselves, you have to be like, okay, just say it in your own words, like in this moment. Mm -hmm. And then fun runs. So it like evolves into, but it's it's not like plot points aren't improvised or something. Right. Well, you, that's what we did with you, right? I oh, like yeah, completely that's right. forgot I for a second. <laughs> that you, you like made our, our, show. our, you know, you that was huge. got it picked up. Thanks, no, Joe. Thanks, no, no, by no, the way. way. Thanks. No, thanks for having me. Thank you. We did pay you, though. That was cool. A lot. Very little. That was really cool that you did the pilot. It was my pleasure. Thanks for asking. Yeah. That was so, that's right. We did like start with scripted and then we went. Um, but it stuck to the script nuts. pretty much, you know. Well, we like, we, all the cast and then everyone that we, you know, all the guest stars, I think we set out to use their, their strengths, which mm -hmm. are an improv background for the most part. Mm -hmm. And like, an exa <laughs> like a good example that I, I, I've said before somewhere was um, in, there's this episode where it's um, Alana is making out with Lincoln, who's Hannibal's character, and I'm, my character's right there, and she, in the script it just says, Alana touches Abby's hair, like pulls her in, mm -hmm. and we did that a couple times, and then the scene turned into like, the two of them like trying to like tackle me in the, in really the dentist's office, and. That was like John Lee was directing that, and he was like, <coughs> Not cutting, <laughs> you know? So then we were just like, all right. But the percentage of the time that we use that is so small. Mm -hmm. but, so yeah, I feel like you don't use the fun runs as much. They tend the to end. be really long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll and end up using like little like flourishes on lines or like mm -hmm. people like really embodying the character more. But it's like we're at this point and have to get to the next point. So it's not like we'll, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like when you were on, we like, le we leave your apartment and you're still on the phone. Right. That was. Oh, that was improv. Right. We was hadn't written that. And then also About like the flight. Even just like oh, once right. we <laughs> ew, in the diaper. So oh, scary. So and nice. also like once we got in the space, it was just like we figured out, oh, the coat thing where he's like in the coats and then grabs, you know? Like oh, yeah. that was a lot of that was improvised like physically. Because that's not like getting but plot it, points across, you know? But it was kind of in the script, right? That was supposed to be a beat in it. Yeah, but we you know, it was like mm -hmm. hidden here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we wrote yeah. whatever yeah. we were hoping would be made, but then it's like so different. What about you guys yeah. improv wise? A lot of the dialogue is improvised, but we've become less dependent on it in terms of script writing. Like we found as we tried to do <clears throat> longer narrative pieces and focus more on characters that we really need those plot points. And if we aren't 
writing the scripts beforehand with all the beats, with all the like proper acts, you know, act breaks and whatnot, that we we just can't make a show like that anymore. Well, especially with this right, latest with this season. season. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. yeah. And so in order to not literally just waste everyone's time with, like you said, it becomes right. very tangential. <laughs> yeah. And you're just, you know, like <clears throat> deviating so far from the plot. And this year we, re we really thought, like, we're not going to use that. Mm -hmm. We're right. deviating so we far it. from the plot that we can't, like, we're wasting time. So you're also, like, a crew, you're just like, all right, like, everybody has to, like, get home kind of thing. Absolutely. Like, totally. They're like, <laughs> Absolutely. yeah, we get it. You're really yeah. funny to get <laughs> yeah. things up. Yeah. But, you know. And yeah. it's like, you got to, like, make a product at the end, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has that, that must have been a big change from season four to season five with improv. Yeah. And, like, buckling right. down. Just, yeah. More, more economical with time. And there's kind of a freedom, you know, and it's just like it puts a lot of the onus on the writing, which I think we really appreciate and enjoy. And it is challenging, as you guys know, to like think of stories and have them actually like make sense and be funny. And all, I mean, all the things that we kind of took for granted before because we just thought, oh, we'll do it on the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we just we don't have that luxury anymore, but it actually gives us more freedom, I think. Totally. Totally.